matchups against the Mustangs in their history. This will be matchup number four, the Bandits. They have been here a while. They have bounced around to a few different leagues since they began play in 2000. And going up against the new boys on the block with the Gillette Mustangs as they are being introduced out to the crowd here at the Camplex right now with the passing game putting on a show, four touchdowns for the passing game in the Mustangs win against the Storm. It was the running game that shined in the game two weeks ago against Rapid City. Jamie Jefferson had three touchdowns. Michael Pena had a touchdown. Arthur Anderson had a touchdown as well, rushing. And then Arthur Anderson had a receiving touchdown. And Jalen Jefferson had a receiving touchdown of his own. And there was a pick six that the team chose. Mustangs are being introduced to the crowd for the very first time for the 2023 season. Boy, it's going to be a good one here today. And what better way to get the home opener started than having a chance to get to know one of the offensive linemen for the Mustangs. James Big Mike Hines joined the Gillette Mustangs Coaches Show on Monday. We had a chance to get to know him. James Big Mike Hines, the starting uh, left guard, and his first name is James, but everybody calls him Big Mike. Here is why. Here is James Big Mike Hines on the Gillette Mustangs Coaches Show from last Monday.
Did you say Sioux City's getting the ball? Did you I hear? Didn't hear what he was saying. Yeah, me neither. <laughs> That was uh, all right. That was Big Mike Hines on the Gillette Mustangs pregame show. As the pregame show is over, we are ready to go from the Camplex in Gillette, Wyoming. The Bandits start off with the ball. They will be on offense. The Gillette Mustangs will put their high-powered defense out there. The Mustangs lead the league in interceptions with not one, not two, not three, not four, not five. Yeah, you know, LeBron has to go a little higher. Ten interceptions for the Mustangs on the season so far. They had four against Southwest Kansas and six against Rapid City. And the first appearance of these terrific black and gold jerseys for the Gillette Mustangs are on the field as we speak with some yellow trim on the side of it and then some yellow trim down the sides. It's almost as a, a Pittsburgh native, you have to say it is almost like the Steelers and then the Sioux City Bandits working in their all whites. They got their all black helmets with their Bandits logo on the side and the Gillette has the Gillette G loud and proud on both sides of their helmets. A green field with two black end zones. The, comp the uh, crew at the Camplex has been working really, really hard throughout the past few days to get this field going. This field used to be long for the, of the uh, Utah Blaze from the Arena Football League. They got the Gillette Mustangs logo in the center of the field with it being 50 yards long, obviously. And if you're new to the CIF, this is the first time that we are going to see the new rules. You can go for three from the five yard line after a touchdown and you can go for four from the 10. You can also go for two from the two as well. And you can also kick an extra point that will be worth one point. The Bandits only have one extra point attempt on the season so far. The Mustangs have not had an extra point attempt. They do not have a kicker on the roster. Grant Higgins is the kicker who will lead things off. The Mustangs will be working right to left, and the Bandits will be working right to left. The Mustangs working left to right as both of these teams are trying to stay on the undefeated train. The Bandits looking to 
pop across the passenger cars and get to the front of the locomotive to go to 3-0 and in CIF play. The band is looking to go to 4-0 and in overall play. They had a non-league game to start the season, and the Mustangs are looking to go a different way. They are looking to ride on their horses to get to the locomotive and go to 3-0 and for the first time in franchise history in CIF play with the terrific start that the Mustangs have been putting on so far to start the season, really doubting a lot of people because their record does not show how this team is from one year ago. This is a completely different team, as mentioned. Three starters have returned from last year's team, and Rashad Ruckett really is one of them. He is out for this game today. As both of these teams are getting ready, there still is a minute and 45 left on the uh, clock to get things ready for the uh, pregame clock. The uh, inactives for uh, the Mustangs go as follows. Uh, Manolo Codwell, he is a new running back for the Mustangs. He came into town on Monday. Then a new lineman, Jacob Ungrul, is out. Anandi Banks, a key. Those are the three inactives for the Mustangs today. But we're still waiting for the uh, pregame clock to go down. the Bandits actually going back to uh, their coaching staff with uh, Cedric Walker being the head man for the Mustangs once again in his second full-time year at the helm of this team and head coach Irv Strobin at the helm of the Bandits with so many with, you want to talk about somebody who has been with the Bandits. He has been with them from the beginning. He was an O-lineman for the Bandits from 2000 to 2008. Elected into the 2010 Ring of Honor for the Bandits. He has been the full-time head coach since 2012 coming into this season, a 97-37 overall record. He is also the defending CIF coach of the year. As the clock is down, as we are ready to go to start off the home stretch for the 2023 season for the Gillette Mustangs taking on the Sioux City Bandits. Who will be atop of the CIF when the night is done? We will find out with both of these teams looking to go to 3-0. Higgins approaches the football and we are underway from the Camplex as it goes to Span at the 20, a short kick. Spans gets up to the 25, looking to the far wall. He gets across in the Mustangs territory at the 23, ball is out. Mustangs are saying the ball is out. No signal from our officials yet, but the Bandits do get it back. The Bandits putting the signal that they have the ball and the officials say otherwise. However, the officials are talking this over. Mustangs are saying they have the ball with Xavier Span fumbling the ball at the far side. He took it for about seven yards from the initial snap when he caught the ball. The Mustangs are still saying that they have it and the officials are gonna come onto the field. It's a little hard for us to hear from our vantage point here at the Camplex where uh, what the officials are saying with uh, Taz Wilson, the starting quarterback for the Bandits, waiting to go back onto the field. As the Mustangs defense is out there ready to go. And it just seems like that this may be going to a review with Xavier Spann fumbling the opening kickoff. He got it at around the Bandits 20 as he got it across Mustangs territory. He was fighting for it with a bunch of bodies around him at the Mustangs 23 yard line over at the far wall. And the Mustangs said immediately that the ball was out and they recovered. However, the Bandits are saying otherwise, and it looks like the officials are going to be reviewing this. As play has stopped already, and already a crazy start to this game for the home opener for the Gillette Mustangs 2023 season. As mentioned, both of these teams are 2-0 in CIF play. 
Both of these teams looking to go atop of the CIF standings. There were three teams that are 2-0 and oh with the Mustangs, the Bandits, and the Omaha Beef who are on their bye week. So whoever wins this game will be atop of the CIF standings as the officials go back on to the field and we'll try to hear what the call is. Well, how about that? Mustangs ball! Xavier Spann fumbles the opening kickoff, and the Mustangs offense goes on the field, and they're going to be working. Another turnover for that benefits the Mustangs. It was a crazy start last week. The Mustangs got the ball first, and then they fumbled, and then there was an interception. And then the Mustangs got it back off of a pick of their own as Pina lines up under center to start this game, and he's gonna send it off to a wide receiver screen to the near wall for Higgins. Gets up to about the 25. The ball is at the Mustangs 21, a gain of around four for Corrance Higgins. I wanna start for uh, Corrance Higgins. He did not have a catch last uh, against the Marshalls two weeks ago, but he had four touchdowns against Southwest Kansas. As they move the ball up, it's a gain of four, bringing up a second and six, as the Mustangs will be working left to right with the Bandits fumbling the opening kickoff, and the Mustangs offense goes on the field, working with a second and eight. They move the ball back two yards as Pena lines up in the shotgun. Jefferson is to his right, two down motion receivers to the fall while they go in motion. Pena, design run. Pena, he has some speed. He's up to the 15, and he's tackled by Span. The Mustangs get in the Bandits' territory. A huge run for Mike Pena. Coming into this game, Pena has had a he can run and he can also get on the wheels as well. 95 rushing yards coming into this game for Mike Pena as the ball moves up to the Bandits. 14, a fresh set of downs, first and 10 on the huge run for Mike Pena on a design run. He Tucked the ball, took it up the right side, and he was on his way. Pena lines up in the shotgun. Jefferson is offset to the left. Two down motion receivers both ways. An X receiver there as well. Pena takes a snap. He looks to throw. He steps up into the pocket. He looks to run again. Gets a block as he goes to the wall, not gaining much. He got a block from Jefferson as Pena was looking to throw. Mustangs still looking for their first pass of the ball game as the two minutes of the first quarter have flown by already. And as we're moving right along in this game, still nothing to nothing with the opening drive for the Mustangs. It was supposed to be Bandit's ball, but they fumbled. Xavier Spann fumbled the opening kickoff. It had to go to a review as the Mustangs now have it back on offense with Pena lining up in the shotgun all alone. Two down motion receivers go in motion on the far wall. And Pena is going to keep it again. And Pena is not going to gain much. He gets up to the original line of scrimmage. Tackled at the left hash, gaining about one on the play. And that's going to bring up a third and ten for the Mustangs on the Bandits' 14-yard line with the Mustangs stalling with the new set of downs after Mike Pena had the big rush to start off the possession. Pena will line up at the shotgun, two down motion receivers both ways, an X receiver at the line of scrimmage is Darian McAllister and Jefferson. No, it's gonna be a design run to Pena again, and Pena gets up to the 10, well short of the first down for a gain of around four. It's gonna be around a fourth and six coming up for the Mustangs, and I think offensive coordinator Reggie Gray already has his mind made up. They are gonna go for it at the Bandits 11 yard line. Well, we'll move to the right hash, officially listed as a fourth and six. Ball is at the 11-yard line. Bandits only 
Need the cover 11 yards as the Mustangs are looking to convert a fourth and six near the red zone. Pena lines up all alone in the shotgun. Two down motion receivers both ways. An X receiver there as well. Pena takes a snap. They bring the rush. He fires it. And it's going to be incomplete. A huge rush for the Bandits defensively. The O-line cannot hold up. Arthur Anderson was the intended receiver. Pena had to get the ball off right away. And the Mustangs come up empty in their first offensive possession of the ball game. So the Mustangs defense goes back to work for the first, they, they go back to work for the first time in two weeks, I should say. Ball is at the Bandits 11 yard line. The Bandits working right to left and then the Mustangs will be working left to right on defense with Taz Wilson, the former Mustang on the field for Sioux City as he lines up under center and a false start out of the gate. It looks like for Daniel Small, the left guard for the Bandits. With the Bandits looking to, it's gonna be a five yard penalty. It is a false start. The first penalty of the game goes against Sioux City. Our officials today are Kirk Carpenter, Matt Pollock, Jeff Rathman, Charles Tate, and David Shrimble. Instead of it being a first and 10 from the 11, it will be a first and 15 at the Bandit six yard line. As they are on offense for the first time, Wilson lines up in the shotgun in the end zone. He takes a snap, Wilson looks though he's gonna fire this one deep and it is nearly intercepted. Batted in the air and Deontay Jones almost had it. That would have been his fourth interception of the season. But Deontay Jones flying around the field for the Mustangs. Pass is incomplete. The Bandits go back to work, working with a second and 15 from their own six yard line. With Wilson, he will line up in the shotgun all by himself. Uh, two down motion receivers in both ways and two X receivers both ways as well. Wilson, he takes the snap, at least he did with flags everywhere. And it seems like there may be another false start against the Bandits. We'll see if the officials are talking it over. The Mustangs are saying it is on Sioux City. This will be their second false start on this drive. And it is another false start against Sioux City. The Bandits uh, shooting themselves in the foot, uh, no pun intended there. It's gonna move back to a second and 20 as the ball goes back to the Bandits three yard line. Wilson, he will line up in the shotgun alone. Two down motion receivers in both ways. Another flag is on the field and it looks like there's gonna be another full start against the Bandits with Dejerius Reese, one of the new offensive linemen for the Bandits. May have jumped early, Rashad Mungro is on the right side as well. It's another false start, the second false start in a row for Sioux City. Wow. The Mustangs on defense looking to really take advantage of this good opportunity as the ball moves back to the one yard line. It's back as far as it will go. Wilson, he lines up under center. Drew Prohaska is in the backfield. Perhaps the Bandits could be looking for a run to get out of this hole. And it is going to be a run. And they get back up to the original line of scrimmage. Garrett Pendleton comes up to make the tackle. It moves to the Bandits 10. With uh, Fred Bruno getting the call for the Bandits. Tony Peters came up with the assist on the tackle as well. It's gonna be a third and 11 coming up for the Bandits deep in their own territory. Wilson, he will line up in the shotgun. Two down motion receivers go in motion. Wilson takes a snap, a flag is on the field. It is fired and it's intercepted. John Harper loses the ball and Deontay Jones looking to get it back. The Bandits are on the ground at the Bandits 20 yard line. Flags everywhere with a crazy play that started from scrimmage and ending with Deontay Jones going to the ground with an interception by Sean Harper Jr. A 
as the officials are making the call and the interception gets wiped away. The penalty is on the Mustangs and the worst way possible for the Mustangs to get their first penalty of the ball game. And that is the third interception that was taken away from the Mustangs this season because of a penalty. It will be still third down. Made the officials, it was a free play because the officials didn't blow the play dead. Wilson was able to get a throw off. And he will go back under center. Perhashka is in the backfield. Two down motion receivers both ways. And there's an X receiver to the near wall. Wilson under center. Perhashka is going to get the call. And he is going to gain nothing. A gain of about one or two on the plays. I take that back with Tony Peters coming up to make the tackle near the left side. But Perhashka looking to get to the near wall. as the officials are going to mark the ball at the left hash at the Bandits 17 yard line. And no question, the Bandits are going to go for it. The Mustangs had a fourth down conversion that failed earlier on in this game. That's how the Bandits got the ball back in. My apologies, they're gonna go for a field goal. This is the first field goal that the Mustangs have seen so far this season. It is three points if it would count. as the officials are making an announcement. And unfortunately, the officials are mic'd up, but from our vantage point, we can't hear what they are saying. As it looks like, no teams deciding to take timeouts. All of the timeouts are still on the field with 7.27 left in the first quarter in a crazy game. That started with the Bandits fumbling the kickoff. Xavier Spann fumbled the kickoff and the Mustangs were able to get it back and went to a review. And the Mustangs had their first offensive possession of the game and they stalled, failing on a fourth down conversion. And the Bandits are in the same spot. But the Bandits now working with a fourth and five. They were lining up to kick a field goal. Brandon Mainz is the kicker listed for Sioux City. He was practicing pre-game. Bandits in the huddle when the Mustangs are on the field. And Taz Wilson and the company will come on the field. The Bandits will go for with a fourth and five at their own 17. And Wilson will line up alone in the shotgun. Two down motion receivers both ways. Two X receivers outside as well. Wilson takes a snap on the fourth and five. He fires it quickly over the middle, incomplete. The intended receiver was Fred Bruno. Nolan Burnett was on coverage for Gillette as both teams exchange fourth down conversions that have failed to start the two offensive possessions of the ball game. And the Mustangs will return to the field on offense looking to get some things going. They stalled in the red zone in their last offensive possession. They were not able to convert a fourth and long from the Bandits 11 yard line as the Mustangs go back onto the field in Bandits territory. Ball is listed at the right hash at the Bandits 17. Danielle will line up at the shotgun. Jefferson is to his left. Two down motion receivers both ways. As Higgins is going to be motioned to the near wall. And Pena will hand it off to Jefferson. Jefferson looking to fight up to the right side. And not going to gain much on the play. The Bandits were ready for the run. Seems uh, Zach a Schlugger came up to make the tackle for Sioux City. Gain of two yards for Jefferson as it is a second and eight at the Bandits 15. For Ralph Turner, the starting center for the Mustangs, Reese Fancheckson as a tight end, and James Big Mike Hines, the left guard. Pena lines up in the shotgun. Jefferson is to his left, two down motion receivers are in motion. Pena, design run, and he gets stripped up at the 14, looking to run to the left side. Another design run for a gain of around one for Gillette with uh, Reggie Gray 
frustrated, the offensive coordinator for Gillette. Ball moves up to the Bandits 14 yard line. Third and seven coming up for the Mustangs on offense. Coming into this game, the Mustangs were six of 19 on third down conversions and five of 11 on fourth down conversions with Pena sending the receivers. He takes a snap from the shock and he fires it. It's nearly intercepted. Dejon Emery, who leads the Bandits in sacks and also leads the CIF in sacks, almost came up to make the interception from his position at the left side of the line and the Mustangs 0 for 1 on fourth down conversions already. They will go up to the line and try to redeem themselves from their last offensive possession. As mentioned, the Mustangs, a 5 and 12 on fourth down conversion so far this season. They are 0 for 1 in the game so far as the score is nothing to nothing still with 440 left in the first a defensive game so far with Reese Fan checking in as the tight end on the right side. Pena sends the receivers in motion. He takes a snap. Pena steps up. He fires towards the end zone and it is incomplete. No flags are on the field. Karan Higgins was the intended receiver at the far wall. And it's going to be a turnover and once again the Mustangs come up empty on fourth down. Xavier Spann had the breakup for Sioux City as the Low scoring defensive game continues with 423 left in the first. The score is still nothing to nothing with three offensive possessions so far and they all have failed on fourth down conversions. The Mustangs have two, the Bandits have one as the Bandits will come onto the field for offensive possession. Number two, Wilson, he lines up in the shotgun. They will be working at their own 14. Sends the receivers in motion to the far wall. And Prohashka will get the call. And he's going to not gain much tackled at the wall by Tony Peters at the 15. A gain of around two for Sioux City, working with their second offensive drive of the ball game. If you don't count them fumbling the kickoff to start the ball game, a gain of one for Drew Prohashka. It's good to see Prohashka out there. Prohashka suffered a injury at the end of regulation of the Bandits' win against the Liberty two weeks ago, but it seemed like he was in good spirits and talking to the coaching staff. He was able to go to the after party, so it's good to see Drew Prohashka out on the field as Wilson lines up in the shotgun. Prohashka is to his right, two down. Most receivers go to the far wall. Wilson takes a snap. He has plenty of time. He fires, and he, it is complete at midfield. A wide open man catches it, and he's tackled at the 20. Catch being made by Braden Mites, one of the both way players for the Bandits. As Sioux City gets to the plus side of the field, working to the Mustangs 20. Ball will be moved to the right hash with the uh, Mustangs on defense, working on their side of the field for the first time in this ball game. And the Mustangs have never trailed so far this season in their two games. See if the Bandits can change that here as Wilson lines up in the shotgun. Prohashka is to his right. Two down motion receivers to the far wall both ways. One goes to the near wall. Next receiver is there. Wilson takes a snap. A design run with a flag on the field as he tried the option. It's Prohashka with flags on the field with the Bandits not being set with receivers going everywhere in down motion. One of the rules in CIF is it's also it's like Canadian rules. A receiver can get a running motion. A handful of flags for the Bandits already from the O-line position with false starts from their last offensive possession. And let's see what the call is here. It's going to be a false start against the Bandits. Once again, that will be a five-yard penalty as the ball will move back to midfield right at the center of the Gillette Mustangs logo that was put in to the field last night. This field was a member of the AFL belong to the Utah Blaze. Wilson will line up in the shotgun all by himself. Two down motion receivers go. Wilson takes a snap, stepping up at the pocket. He fires it and it's complete. It is complete to Fred Bruno at the Mustang seven yard line at the near wall. And the Bandits, they are working on the 10 yard line in Sioux City. Working in the red zone for the first time in this game. Ball moves to the left hatch with a huge gain. 
that moves the ball up to the Mustangs' 10. With a handful of big catches for Sioux City on this drive, something that the Mustangs have been so good at covering so far this year. As the official needed to a stop play, so the uh, sticks could uh, get out of the way because it's a first and goal from the Mustangs 10 for Sioux City. Wilson, he lines up in the shotgun, two down motion receivers in motion. And it will be Bruno getting the handoff, getting tackled by Pendleton at the 10, a ankle tackle to Bruno. He gains one on the play. It will be a second and goal from the Mustangs 9. Mustangs working in the red zone on defense for the first time in this game. And as mentioned, the Mustangs have never trailed so far this year. The closest they have come was against Southwest Kansas. It was eight to six, and that was it. Bandits trying to change that ball to the right hash of the Mustangs' nine-yard line. Wilson lines up in the shotgun. Borhash goes to his right, all of the receivers at the near wall. Wilson takes a snap. He looks to throw. He fires near the end zone. It's caught. Touchdown, Sioux City. Fred Bruno with his third touchdown of the season. And the Bandits strike first, and the Mustangs trail for the first time this season. And let's see what the Bandits will decide to do. The Bandits have gone for three the most this year. This will be their 15th attempt going for three, and they are, the ball is at the five yard line, 10 to 14 for Sioux City going for three this season. This will be their 15th attempt. Looking to go up nine to nothing as the clock continues to roll with 15 seconds left in the first. Wilson lines up in the shotgun. He looks to throw. Wilson, he fires it towards the end zone. It's batted away by Sean Harper Jr. However, the Bandits will go to the second, up six to nothing. Sean Harper Jr. making the break up at the as the Bandits were actually penalized. Mustangs declining the penalty. Sean Harper Jr. making the break up at the corner along the near wall. As the Mustangs, they are playing from behind for the first time this season. There is still 3.4 uh, seconds on the clock. So the Mustangs will have a kickoff, and that will take us to the second quarter. With a touchdown pass from Taz Wilson to Fred Bruno. Bruno getting his third touchdown of the season. Bruno, one of the veterans in his 12th year with Sioux City. And as I mentioned, Sioux City, an experienced team. A lot of these guys have experience playing with each other. That's something the Mustangs are not used to with only three returners from last year's team. And with Rashad Ridley out of this game, he is on IR right now. Karantz Higgins is taking his place at the left side of the kickoff return. Jalen Jefferson is in his usual spot along the right side as well. As Rashad Rocky Ridley, a huge loss for the Mustangs on IR. Hopefully they will be able to get him back later on in the season. But Braden Mines awaiting to kick this away for Sioux City with a 10 seconds left in the first quarter. They put seven seconds back on the clock as it goes out of bounds with Sioux City looking for the Uno point. It does not go in. Something else the Mustangs have not seen with the Storm and the Marshals not having a listed kicker, but Brandon might he could kick it far. That went into the back of the end zone at the Mustangs at the Mustangs bench on the left side. And only two seconds were taken off the clock, and by rule, since it went out of bounds, the ball moves up to the 25, so the Mustangs will have good field position to start this offensive drive. It's their third offensive drive of the ball game. First two drives, failing on fourth down conversions with the Mustangs running up to the line with the clock winding down, and that's the end of the first quarter. 
we go to the second with first place in the CIF on the line. As the Bandits strike first, they lead six to nothing, but the Mustangs will have the ball when we come back. Are we live? Is the stream on? Yes. Okay. There goes my headset. Thank you, Brad. Welcome back. Welcome back to 101.5 The Drive, my friends. And for everybody joining us on our YouTube stream, we thank you for joining us as well. Colton Nabai is with you as the Bandits go up six to nothing heading into the second. As Pena lines up in the shock and he takes a snap. He looks to throw, he fires it low towards the field, towards the end zone, and it's caught. Higgins has it. Touchdown, Mustangs. What a response. Touchdown number five on the year for Higgins. What a way to start the quarter for Gillette. They get their first touchdown at home. Reggie Gray talking to the officials. What does he want to do? The Bandits had a three-point conversion that failed and the Mustangs are looking to plus three of them. The Mustangs will go for three as Pena out of the gate, throwing it long at midfield, a pass of around 25 yards to Karan Higgins with Higgins who was silent against the Marshalls two weeks ago. He has his fifth touchdown of the season and he ties the game. And the Mustangs will line up to go for three. Pena lines up in the shotgun all by himself. Two down motion receivers. Pena takes a snap, looks to throw from the 10, stepping up in the pocket. He goes to the 15, he fires towards the back of the end zone and he just has to throw it away. So the game will remain tied at six. And the Mustangs were the last CIF team to be perfect on three-point conversions. They were three for three heading into this game. But unfortunately, Mike Pena just couldn't find anybody in the end zone. He had to throw it away. So the game remains tied at six in a dogfight so far in the Wild Wild West against the Bandits and the Mustangs. What an answer for Gillette after the Bandits had a long touchdown of their own. And the Mustangs will kick right to left. The Bandits will receive left to right. This will be the first kickoff return for the Bandits since they fumbled to start the ball game. Fred Bruno and Ledwood Joyner are back for Sioux City. Bruno has the touchdown for Bandits in this game. It's Karan Higgins doing all the work. He will kick it away. Higgins holding the ball right now. Playing the C of he's just gonna put it on the T. Arthur Anderson sprinting out onto the field for the Mustangs to round out the kickoff team for Gillette. And Bruno will kick this one away. It's going to go to the near wall taken by Bruno. Bruno has it at the 20, and what a tackle made at the 20. Flags everywhere. Arthur Anderson with the big hit stick for the Mustangs. Flag on the field. 
right when the tackle was made by Anderson. We'll see what it is. Officials are talking it over now. Cedric Walker trying to get in there. Right now the ball is at the Bandits 20. Lock in the back against Sioux City. More the merrier for Gillette as the ball gets pushed back to the 10. It's a 15 yard penalty so the Bandits will start off this offensive drive at their own 10. Third offensive drive, not counting the uh, kickoff return to start the game for Sioux City. They had a touchdown. Taz Wilson to Fred Bruno. They failed on the three point conversion to make it six to nothing and the Bandits gave up a touchdown last. 6-6 six, six now with Wilson lining up under center. Prohashka is in the backfield. And play action, Wilson, he dumps it off to Bruno, who's wide open at the 20, gets across midfield, and he's pushed out of bounds at the Mustangs 20. Being pushed out by Deontay Jones. Wilson to Bruno, that connection has been working fantastically for Sioux City as it goes up to the Mustangs 20. A huge gain. I think 20 yard gain for Sioux City as they get to the Mustang side of the field once again. Wilson will line up in the shotgun. Rahashka is to his left, two down motion receivers to the near wall, an X receiver to the far wall. Wilson, Rahashka gets the call, but gonna go up the right side and not gaining much. Tackled at the 20. Garrett Pemilton comes up to make the tackle. Devontae Wright got in there as well for the Mustangs. Prohashka looking to go up the right side. They do give him a gain of one. It's gonna be a third, it's gonna be a uh, second and nine uh, for uh, Sioux City, excuse me. I was looking at the uh, timeouts on the uh, scoreboard uh, by accident thinking, wait a minute, it's not third down, it is second down, second and nine at the Mustangs, 19 for Sioux City. Looking to get the lead back. 6-6 six, six with 12 minutes left in the first half. Wilson lines up under center. Prohaska is in the backfield. And it will be Bruno getting the handoff up the right side. Tackled at the 15, short of the first down. A third and short coming up for Sioux City. Nolan Bernan and Tony Peters coming up to make the tackle for Gillette. They give him a gain of four, third and five on the way for Sioux City at the Mustangs 15 yard line. Ball is at the right hash. Mustangs defense giving up a touchdown on their last drive. Looking to change that right here and not do the same. Wilson lines up in the shotgun for hash goes to his right. Wilson takes a snap. He's dancing. Looking to throw towards the corner of the end zone and it is incomplete. Flying over the wall is Fred Bruno again. Pass is incomplete. Bruno almost had it in his hands. And he could not come up with the catch as he went over the wall at the right side. And the Bandits, what will they decide to do here? The offense is staying on the field and it looks like Sioux City is gonna go for it. Brandon Mainz is out there, the uh, kicker for Sioux City. But he will line up to the far wall. And the Mustangs defense looking to stop a fourth and five from their own 15. Wilson, he will line up in the shotgun. All the receivers are two before wall. Ball's at the right hash. Two down motion receivers, two at the line. Wilson takes a snap. He goes to throw from midfield. Fires it quickly, and it's going to be caught by Might. And did he get there? He may be tackled short with Deontay Jones and Sean Harper Jr. coming up to make the tackle. Cedric Walker saying it's Mustangs ball, and it is Mustangs ball. What a tackle by Deontay Jones and Sean Harper Jr. Brandon Mites had it at the right side, and he could not get to the 10 yard line. And the Mustangs offense will go back on the field looking to take the lead. That's the second fourth down conversion that has failed for Sioux City in this game. Mustangs, they had a touchdown on their last offensive possession off of the first play from scrimmage at the 25 with Mike Pena going to Quance Higgins for the fifth touchdown for Higgins on the season.
Now motion receivers go both ways. Pena takes a snap. It's a design run, and Pena is not going to gain anywhere. He gains absolutely nothing with a Kale Beard coming up to make the tackle for Sioux City. See if they officially mark it. It could be a loss of one for the Mustangs. They actually have it as a loss of three. Second and 13 coming up for the Mustangs with the Mustangs looking to find balance in this game. It was the passing attack against the Storm and then the rushing attack against the Marshalls. And now Mustangs need to find balance. Higgins lines up in the shotgun. Jefferson is to his left. Pena looks to throw. He fires it long to Higgins. Higgins gets it. He has it at the 10. Looking to get off Justin Gilbert. He tackles him at the 6. Whoa, a second and 13 conversion for Mike Pena to Karan Higgins. And Higgins tried to get off the former Brown and Steeler. As he tackles him at the 6. And the Mustangs go back into the red zone. They move it to the left hash. They have it at the Bandit 7 with a Justin Gilbert drafted in the first round by the Browns. In 2014, he went eighth overall. Had a pick six against Andrew Luck in his rookie year in 2014. Finished out his career with the Steelers in 2016. Pena lining up in the shotgun all by himself. Jefferson, he will get the call. Jefferson using that speed, jumping away, and he stopped at the one. Jefferson with a burst of speed to the far side. And it results in a second and goal for the Mustangs. Ball is at the one yard line. The Mustangs looking to take the lead for the first time in this game. Ball is at the right hash. And Pena will line up under center. Two down motion receivers with flags everywhere. Bandits are saying that it is on Gillette. That'll be a huge blow for Gillette, who had the ball at the one yard line of the Bandits. Still waiting to get the call. Encroachment against the Bandits, never mind. Bandits saying that it was on the Mustangs, but it was on themselves. And how much more can you move the ball up? The ball is at the Bandits one yard line at the right hash. Ball stays at the one, and the Mustangs go back onto the field with a second and goal. Pena lines up under center. They look to push Pena towards the goal line. He's tackled at the blue paint, and he's in. Touchdown, Mustangs. Mike Pena with another touchdown on the year. And the Mustangs have the lead back. Twelve to six is the score in favor of Gillette with 6.54 and counting left in the second quarter. The Mustangs tried to go for three on their last touchdown and they will try to go for two here to make it a 14 to six game. Pena will line up under center. Jefferson is in the backfield. Trips to the far wall with one down motion receiver. It's McAllister. And McAllister gets the fake. Pena goes to throw from the five. Shimmies his way, tosses it into Anderson. A shuffle play from Mike Pena to Arthur Anderson. And the Mustangs have a 14 to six lead. Pena was working to the right side. He faked it and he was able to toss it into Anderson. And what a start for Arthur Anderson. He made his Mustangs debut last week. He had a touchdown, three catches for 52 yards. And he has a two point conversion, the first successful conversion after a touchdown in this game. And the Mustangs have a 14 to six lead with 6.23 left in the first half. And the Mustangs do get the ball to start the second half 
of play with Higgins. Waiting to tee the ball away. As it looks like we have a timeout on the field, so will we. We will be right back on a 101.5 The Drive. You are listening to Gillette Mustangs Football. As my apologies, we were having some technical we were having some technical difficulties with our commercial, so we will stay with you on 101.5 The Drive, and also on uh, YouTube as well. We want to thank both of our audiences that are listening here tonight for the home opener for the 2023 Gillette Mustang season. The Mustangs starting the season on the road with two victories first against the Southwest Kansas Storm. 30 to 12, and then they defeated the Rapid City Marshall 67 to 20. That's what do we got here with some ponies on the back of two youngins? And everyone goes home with a prize, and that's the, that's the terrific thing about the CIF with all of these teams really getting the crowd involved in the game up TV timeouts during the half. We were in Rapid City last week, uh, two weeks ago when the Mustangs went there and they had a mini circus. That was really cool to see at halftime. 6.23 left in the first half. The Mustangs with a touchdown to make it 14 to six with a rushing touchdown to Mike Pena. But Higgins awaiting to kick it away. That is the second rushing touchdown of the year for Mike Pena. Van is working left to right and Mustangs right to left as Higgins kicks it away. It bounces at the 10 at the far wall with a burst of speed up to the 25 and Joyner has it across midfield to the Mustangs 20. The flag is down however. Bandits had a Blocking the back on their last kickoff return. And kickoff returns not working for the Bandits in this game. There's the call. Got a hold against Sioux City, and that will push the ball way back. A good run by Joyner taken away for the Bandits. And they will move the ball to the Bandits 12. Bandits on their last offensive possession could not come up with a fourth down conversion. And then the Mustangs were able to capitalize as they hold a 14 to six lead with six minutes left in the second. Ball is at the right hash at the Bandits own 12. Wilson will line up in the shotgun to down motion receivers on both ways. And it will be a handoff to Bruno. Bruno gets across the 15 and he gets up to the 19 still on the bandit side of the field short of the first out. Ball moved to the right, to the uh, left wall, excuse me, not to say the far wall with Deontay Jones coming up to make the tackle for the Mustangs. Ball moves to the left hash. It is seven, second and three on the way for Sioux City offensively at their own 18 yard line. Well, that was at the left hash. Wilson will line up in the shotgun. He sends Prohashka out to the near wall. Two down motion receivers both ways. X receivers to the near wall for Sioux City on a second and three. Wilson takes a snap. Looks to throw from the 10, bringing a rush. And Bruno dumps off again. And Bruno with a burst of speed to the 15. He gets pushed out of bounds at the 10. Fred Bruno once again with a dump off. The Mustangs brought a blitz and they left Bruno wide open once again. And let's see where they mark the ball off with a huge first down conversion for Sioux City on a second and three, and they move it to the Mustangs 14. Bandits were near, were inching the red zone on their last offensive possession, and they're doing the same here with the ball moving to the right hash at the Mustangs 14 with Wilson lining up under center. Prohashka is in the backfield to down motion receivers. Go in motion, and Prohashka will get the call up the gut, and he gets tackled 
at the 10, Nolan Burnett comes up to make the tackle. Deontay Jones with an assist as well. But Prohaska with the Bandits looking to do some trickery with three players near Wilson. Wilson had plenty of options to receive the ball and he went to Prohaska looking to trick up the Mustangs defensively. In a six, second and four on the way for Sioux City as they move it inside the 10. They have it at the Mustangs eight. Wilson lines up in the shotgun, Prohaska to his right. Joiner goes in motion to the far wall and it's gonna be a quick pass to Shepard. Shepard has the first down, but he does not get into the end zone as Shepard with a wide receiver screen that went to the far wall. And they move the ball up to the three yard line, a gain of five for Brandon Shepard. They move it to the left hash and the ball will be marked at the two. But the Mustangs looking to get the goal line defense going. Mustangs have a few goal line interceptions. They can use one right now with the Mustangs looking to keep their streak going of at least having one interception in a game. Wilson will line up in the shotgun for Hashka is in the backfield. Two down motion receivers both ways. Wilson, he's gonna hand it off. It's gonna go to Bruno. Bruno gets in up the right side. Touchdown Sioux City. Bruno came from down motion to the far wall. And if the Bandits go for two, and if they convert it, they'll tie the game 14 to 12 right now. See what the Bandits and offensive coordinator Scott Jensen decide to do for the point after. And they're gonna go for three, looking to take the lead. Fourteen to twelve is the score right now. That can change with the Bandits going for three. And as mentioned, the Bandits, they have gone for three the most in the CIF. This will be their 16th three-point attempt on the season. They had one on their first touchdown, but they weren't able to convert. Wilson lines up in the shotgun for Hashka. It's to his right. Two down motion receivers to the near wall. Wilson, bubble snap, but he takes it. He has plenty of time. Dancing at the 15, fires it in the traffic, and it's incomplete. Batted out of the air by Tony Peters. It's Ian McFarland got a hand on it. Sean Harper was there as well with Wilson looking to fire it right to the middle of the end zone. And the Mustangs do hold the lead. 14 to 12 is the score in favor of Gillette. Sioux City is looking to gain some momentum as they have a touchdown with Fred Bruno getting into the end zone once again. Bruno had the first touchdown of the game off of a pass and now he has a rushing touchdown. It's Fred Bruno with touchdown number four on the season. Mustangs looking to respond. They have had touchdowns on their last two offensive possessions. Jalen Jefferson and Karan Higgins will be back for Gillette, who will be working right to left. The Bandits will kick off left to right. Mainz awaiting to kick this one away for Sioux City with a 226 left in the first half and he does as it goes to Higgins. Higgins at the goal line now goes up to the 15 goes to the far wall up to the 25 and that is where he will be tackled a nice run back for Karan Higgins who is filling in on kickoff returns for the injured Rashad Rocket Ridley. Mustangs will start off this offensive possession on the plus side of the field they will have it around the Bandits 23. Ball will move to the right hash with Higgins taking it all the way to the Far wall, 218 left in the first half. The Mustangs will receive the ball to start the second half. Mustangs looking to extend the lead heading into the locker room possibly and then hoping to get out of the locker room and extend it some more. 
with the three-point conversion failing for the Bandits, and that is why the score is 14 to 12 in favor of Gillette with under two to play in the first half. Pena lines up in the shotgun, and it's a design run. He tucks off and he takes off at the 20, getting up to the 15 near the first down marker. Maybe a little bit short with Pena drawing it, and he ran it up the left side. They mark it at the left hash of the Bandits 15, a gain of eight for Mike Pena. Pena and company will have 30 seconds to get another playoff until the 60 until the 60 second warning is on the clock. And in the 60 second warning, with under a minute to play in each half, there's a first down, the clock stops to move the sticks. Pena lines up under center. No one's in the backfield. Two down motion receivers go in motion. And Pena will let the push his way towards the first down. And he gets it, a quarterback keeper for the Bandits. Saying that it's their ball with saying that Pena fumbled the ball. The 60 second warning is on the clock. As the, as the 60 second warning is on the clock with a Bandits defensive coordinator, Marlon Lobban, trying to make his case that that is Bandits ball. With Pena taking a quarterback keeper on a second and two to try to get the first down. Sticks have not moved yet. Looking to space all of this out. As the Mustangs offense is on the field, so the Mustangs will keep the ball. 60 second warning on the clock, and since it's the 60 second warning, the clock stops to the sticks if there is a first down. The Mustangs need to get to the Bandits three for a first down. So essentially the Mustangs are they're just looking to get into the end zone, looking to extend their 14 to 12 lead heading into halftime. And it's already on the field. And the Mustangs offense will join them. Well is at the right hash and Fresh set of downs, first and 10. Media will line up in the shotgun at the Bandits 12. Two down motion receivers to the near wall, one goes to the far wall. Pena takes a snap, it's gonna go to Jefferson. Jefferson not getting much, he is tackled near the line of scrimmage. Tackle made by Claude Davis. It's gonna be a loss on the play for the Mustangs. Claude continues the roll. They have 45 seconds. They do have three timeouts, but they would like to use them, and Reggie Gray does decide to call a timeout. Surprised Mustangs didn't want to call a timeout sooner. First timeout for both teams taken in this game so far. Reggie Gray talking to his offense. We're gonna get a play drawn up with 41.6 left in the first half. With Jefferson getting the handoff on the first and 10, they officially mark it as a gain of nada, second and 10 on the way. Ball is at the left hash at the Bandit's 12 yard line. Pena will Line up in the shotgun, two down motion receivers, both ways an X receiver to the far wall. Pena will send him in motion. Jefferson is gonna fake the handoff. Pena has it, he's going to the five. Look at to get into the end zone, he dies forward. Did he get in? He did not, down at the one. But the clock does stop since it's under 60 seconds of the half. What a run once again for Mike Pena, looking to get his second rushing touchdown of the ball game. Stop the one. The clock continues to get back up. The sticks were reset. With Cedric Walker coming on the field. Reggie Gray there as well. The Mustangs are going towards the 
their own bench. So walk, so Coach Walker was just able to be right there. Rules in CIF, you have to have at least one coach. Uh, only one coach can be on the field at all times for both teams. The clock is moving again with 17 seconds, 14, and miscommunication with Reggie Gray out oh, playing strategy. 10 seconds are on the clock. And Reggie Gray taking a timeout on purpose to get some clock down as they want to try to go forward all to end the half. 10 seconds are on the clock. The Mustangs looking to get a touchdown at the buzzer to end the first half of play. Crowd getting into it, a terrific crowd on hand to open up the home stretch for the Gillette Mustangs. They will have another home game next week in the uh, Stephen Titus Bowl. The Billings Outlaws will come to town. The two teams owned by Stephen Titus will be here in Gillette next Saturday. Pena, he's going to line up under center. And Encroachment is going to be on the field against Sioux City. Pena was looking to get the handoff. Sioux City deciding to call a timeout. Two seconds were taken off the clock. Cedric Walker coming back on to the field. With and it's defensive coordinator Marlon Lovin calling the timeout. With the Mustangs looking to run a play at the Bandits one, looking to take an extended lead with them into the locker room with 10 seconds left in the first half. Gillette holding a 14 to 12 lead. Ball is at the right hash at the Bandits one yard line and the Mustangs looking to punch it in. Mike Pena has a rushing touchdown already in this game. Substitutions come in for Sioux City. They bring in Zach Slugger. Pena, the line up under center. And Pena will look to get a push. He is stopped at the one. Reggie Green has one more timeout if he wants to use it. Five seconds are on the clock, and he will use his last timeout with 3.9 on the clock. They tried the quarterback sneak once again, and Mike Pena went down at the knees. Might be a loss on the play as well. as the officials are looking to get some more seconds back on the clock. They put seven seconds back on the clock with the ball moving back. Still with the right hash at the Bandits one yard line with seven seconds left in this first half and a crazy half with the Mustangs up by two as they are looking to get a score before the first half comes to a close. They try to Quarterback sneak under center for Mike Pena, but the Bandits defense, goal line defense is out there. Five defensive linemen are at the line of scrimmage right next to the ball for the Bandits. And Pena will look to line up under center again. They are not at the goal line, but they're still at the one. Pena, Jefferson's under center. Pena, he'll look the throw. He loves it, and it is caught over the wall! Oh my goodness! Touchdown, Gillette! Michael Cornelius Jr. going over the wall, and he has his first touchdown of the season. With 2.6 on the clock in the half. He went diving to the corner of the end zone along the right side. The 
crowd is hyped up. 2.6 on the clock. And what will the Mustangs decide to do on the point after? They will try to go for two. Two point six is on the clock. Twenty to twelve is the score right now. Pena lines up under center on the two-point conversion on the way. Higgins gets the handoff. Higgins goes up the left side. Did he get in? No signal yet. And they did mark it up with. Two point conversion, good for Perron Higgins. And the Mustangs lead by 10. 2.6 is on the clock. The half is not over yet. The Bandits will have time to run one more play. What a catch by Michael Cornelius Jr. to get his first touchdown of the season. As that's where the uh, fellows working the uh, sticks are right now because the bandits are working left to right. And the Mustangs will kick off right to left. As if the bandits want to get a score, they need to get it off of the kickoff return. approaching the ball with 2.6 left in the first half. And the kick is up to the 15. It's going to be taken by Span. Span gets off his own man. And Span's going to be tackled by McFarlane at his own 15. And that's how the half ends. And the Mustangs will get the football to start the second half of play with Gillette up by 10 over the Sioux City Bandits with first place in the CIF on the line. Half is over, and we will have a lot to talk about. Cedric Walker is on the field, and the officials are talking some things over. Both teams are already in the locker room. Devontae Bright is still on the field waiting for Karantz Higgins as they both will go into the locker room. And bandits, and bandits. Head coach Irv Straubin is near the uh, Mustangs bench. They wanted to uh, talk to the refs. And the half does come to a close with the Mustangs up 22 to 12 over the Sioux City Bandits. We'll have a lot to talk about when we come back on 101.5 the drive. It is currently halftime at the Camplex. The Mustangs lead the Bandits 22 to 12. Cornelius made that catch, right? 18. Yep, 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 yep. Yep, that's Cornelius. So, so if you want stats, so this is obviously Sioux City, Gillette passing, rushing, receiving. Okay, cool. Okay, okay cool, thanks.
lead over the Sioux City Bandits. Pena will line up in the shotgun. Reese Fan checks in as the tight end on the right side. That motion receiver goes in motion to the far wall. Pena takes a snap. He looks to the far wall. It's caught by Higgins. Higgins up to the 20. And he gets tackled near the 25 along the far wall. Karantz Higgins getting up Xavier Spann who made the tackle for Sioux City. A huge first down for the Mustangs to start off the second half. Good game that goes up to the Bandits. They're still on the Mustang side of the field, excuse me. It's on the Mustangs 23. Mustangs thinking that they had it in Bandits territory, but it's still technically on their own side of the field. Ball at the 23. With a huge 15 yard gain for Ron Higgins. Pena. He lines up in the shotgun, sends a down motion receivers. Pena looks to throw, he pumps. He gets out of the pocket. Doesn't get up to the 10, and he gets back up to the line of scrimmage. A gain of one to the 24. Pena did not see anything he liked downfield, try to use his legs to get upfield. One yard game for Pena. Brings up a second and nine for Gillette, just inching that midfield mark. They are one yard away from it. Pena in the game, breaking the huddle with a quick offensive coordinator, Rich Gray. But Pena will eye up in the shotgun. Jefferson is to his right, two down motion receivers in motion, the next receiver is at the near wall. High snap, Pena fakes it, he's gonna be sacked. Miscommunication all the way through. Claude Davis comes up to make the tackle. That's his first solo sack of the season. And that's gonna be a loss on the play for Gillette. They send it back to the 19, that's a loss of five. Bring up a third and 14. Mustangs on their side of the field. They will be working at their own 19 yard line ball. This afternoon. Line up in the shotgun. Two down motion receivers both ways. X receivers at the line of scrimmage at the near wall. Pena takes a snap. He looks at throw. He fires it long down the field to an open man. It's Higgins. Higgins has it at the Bandits 15. He's pushed out of bounds by Zach Schroeder. Third and 13. No problem for this Mustangs offense. A huge game. That's a game of about 15 yards for the Mustangs. And they have it at the Bandits 15. Pena will line up in the shotgun all by himself. Two down motion receivers go in motion both ways. And it's gonna be a fake to Jefferson. Pena keeps it and Pena not gonna gain much. He may lose a yard. Zach Schlugger comes up to make the tackle for Sioux City. Dejon Emery was there as well. It's a gain of one. Ball moves to the 16 of the Bandits for the Mustangs. Mustangs currently in the huddle with offensive coordinator Richard Gray and they go back out on the field. Reese Fan checks in as the tight end on the right side. And Pena will line up in the shotgun. Jefferson is to his right, two down motion receivers. They go in motion to the far wall. Pena takes a snap, he goes to throw. Quick check down, incomplete, too low for Higgins. First incompletion on this drive for the Mustangs. It's gonna break up a third and nine. Mustangs have a third and long conversion already in this drive, converting a third and 13 to get them in the Bandits territory, and the Mustangs are gonna need to come up with something here as five minutes have gone by here in the third quarter with the Mustangs looking to extend their 10-point lead, 22 to 12 over Sioux City. Pena breaks the huddle. Jefferson and McAllister are the X receivers both ways. Two down motion receivers go to the near wall. Pena sends them in motion. Pena takes a snap. Goes the further than the 25. Fires towards the end zone and it is intercepted. No incomplete. Almost had it. It's going to bring up a fourth down for the Mustangs and boy the Bandits were so close to having a pick. Carlton Watkins almost picked it off at the corner uh, along the far wall of the end zone as he 
went to the wall. You can hear it from up here. Fourth and 11 coming up for the Mustangs at the Bandits 16. They need to get to the Bandits 5 to convert. Pena will line up in the shotgun. Anderson is the S receiver to the far wall. The Gallister is the S receiver to the near wall. Two down motion receivers both ways. Pena, he looks to take the snap with Whistle is a free play as they fire towards the end zone. Higgins incomplete was the intended receiver in the end zone. Pena threw that into double coverage. As the officials are talking it over off of the fourth and 11. Here's the call. Approachment against Sioux City. That will move the ball up. It's going to be a fourth and six now. The ball will move up to the Bandits 11. So instead of it being a fourth and 11, it will be a fourth and six. Mustangs still need to get to the Bandits 5 to convert. You have five yards to wiggle with. You only need to get to the Bandits 5. So you don't need a touchdown to convert, but the Mustangs won one one. Pena lines up in an empty shotgun. He takes a snap. He looks to throw. He's in trouble. He looks to run for the left side. He swings it in, and it's a first down! J.J. Jefferson has it at the two! What a conversion, and Mike Pena using his magic, dancing out of the pocket, and firing in into an extremely tight window for J.J. Jefferson. And he has it at the two, a huge gain. That's a gain of nine. Not a touchdown, but a first down for the Mustangs, as they have held the ball. For close to eight minutes, 7.40 and counting left in the third, a long offensive drive to start off the half of the Mustangs. And for Reggie Gray and company, that's no problem. Pena lines up in the shotgun. Jefferson is to his left. Jefferson is going to get the call, and the Bandits read it right away. Clyde Davis comes up to make the tackle for Sioux City. Could potentially be a loss on the play on the first and goal. And it is going to be a loss of, loss of four. Ball moves to the Bandit six. It will be a second and goal from the Bandit six yard line. Ball's at the right hash. Pena breaks the huddle. McAllister is the X receiver to the far wall. Two down motion receivers. Higgins and Anderson are to the far wall as Pena lines up with the shotgun. Pena, he looks the far right and miscommunication. It was nearly intercepted. Arthur Anderson was the intended receiver, but Carlton Watkins almost picked it off. Miscommunication. Anderson wasn't even looking at the ball. An incompletion brings up a third and six. And if you're new to the CIF, the clock does not stop for incompletions. It continues to roll. It's not like college or the NFL. The alignment waiting for the skill guys to come back on. Mustangs with a fourth down conversion already on this drive, and they had a third and 13. But in order for the Mustangs to convert, they need to get into the end zone. A third and goal at the Bandit six. Ball is at the left hash. Pena is in the shotgun. Jefferson is to his right. Two down motion receivers go to the near wall. As they try to run it to Jefferson, Jefferson gets nowhere. They tried to toss it back to Jefferson along the right side. Dejon Emery comes up to make the tackle with a fury of bandits that were waiting there as well. Reggie Gray put his hands on his head right away when Jefferson got tackled because it was right in front of him. Jefferson was working to the right side. And it's going to be a fourth and goal for the bandits 12. The Mustangs have a fourth and 13 already on this drive, but they had some field to work with. The Mustangs have to get into the end zone to convert this fourth down. Fourth and goal from the Bandits 12. Ball was at the right hash. Pena lines him in the shotgun. Two down motion receivers. Both ways, two X receivers. Both ways at the line. Pena takes a snap. He looks to throw. Claude Davis brings him down at the 20. Claude Davis, he shot out of a cannon. He was unblocked. And the Mustangs come up empty on an offensive drive that took nine minutes and 54 seconds and they come up empty.
After a long drive, frustrating for the Mustangs offense and offensive coordinator Reggie Gray as they unfortunately come up empty. And the Bandits still down by one possession with the new CIF rules. If they would get a touchdown and get a four point conversion, they would tie the game. And that is one of the reasons why these new rule changes were put in place for this season to show that just because you're down doesn't mean you're not out of it. And with these new rules, you are never out of it. We're copycatting some rules that the uh, XFL did as well. But, but in the XFL, you can only get three points on a point after, and the CIF, you can get four. And Garrett Pendleton, one of those defensive players that's out on the field for the Mustangs, he went to Hawaii for a XFL tryout. He was on the July Mustangs coaching show a few weeks ago. He had a chance to interact with the Rock for a little bit. And Garrett Pendleton has been considering professional wrestling as maybe an avenue if he cannot get anything going in his football career. Garrett Pendleton and company looking to come up big defensively. And Taz Wilson comes on the field for the first time for the Bandits offense. He lines up under center two down motion receivers go both ways. And Prohaska gets the handoff and Prohaska not going to gain much. An ankle tackle made by Devontae Wright. Garrett Pendleton comes up to assist him. It's going to be a gain of two to move it to the band, to move it to the Bandits 21. They're still on their side of the field. Wilson will line up in the shotgun. It's empty. Two down motion receivers in both ways and two X receivers both ways as well. Wilson takes the snap, he fires it over the middle. It's gonna be caught by Bruno, and Bruno gets up to the Mustangs 16. Tony Peters comes up to make the tackle for the Mustangs. It's good to see Tony Peter back on the field, one of the returners for the Mustangs. Tony Peters tours ACL here one year ago. It's good to see Tony Peters with his uh, first game back from his tour in ACL, his first home game here in a Mustangs uniform. Ball moves up to Mustangs territory. It's at their 18 yard line. Wilson lines up in the shotgun for Hashka is to his right. Two down motion receivers, both ways. Wilson, design run. He looks to run for it, up the gut, and Tony Peters is there to make the tackle. With some assistance by Deontay Jones and Nolan Burnett. A big first down start for the Mustangs as they are working on defense in their own territory. It's a gain of three. Ball moves up to the, that's, they mark, they, they have it as a second and seven. Gain of two, ball's at the left hash as it moves up to the Mustang 16. Taz Wilson breaks the huddle, he will line up in the shotgun for hash bucks to his left. Two down motion receivers, both ways on the down motion receiver, goes in motion to the full wall with a flag on the field with Rashad Mungro saying it's on Garrett Pemilton. With Mungro going a little early with Pemilton having a rush, so we'll see who it is on. And it's gonna be an approachment against Pemilton. Rashad Mungro said it was on Pemilton and that's gonna move the ball up. Ball will move up to the 11 yard line to bring up a second and three. Ball is at the left hash at the Mustangs 11. Wilson will line up under center, but Hashka is in the backfield. Two down motion receivers both ways, and Shepard is the X receiver to the near wall. Bruno gets the handoff from down motion. No one but Nap brings it down. A loss on the play for Sioux City. Bruno was touched at the wall at around the 13. See where they mark it. It is a loss on the play. It's going to bring up third down for Sioux City. And they do move it back to the 13, a loss of two for Sioux City to bring up a third and five in Mustangs territory. They are working at the Mustangs 13. Wilson will line up in the shotgun. Prohaska is to his left. Two down motion receivers, both ways, an X receiver to the far wall, and at the down motion receivers go to the far wall. 
Wilson takes a snap, and there's a throw from the 20. First was the end zone, incomplete. Bruno was the intended receiver. Isaiah McFarland was on coverage, and no doubt the Bandits are going to go for it. Isaiah McFarland with a nice job there on coverage. The ball was low to the ground. Isaiah McFarland, teammates called Fargo. Had a chance to uh, get to know Fargo a little better when we went to uh, Dodge City for the first game against the Storm. We sat next to each other on the 12-hour bus ride. Ball moves to the left hash, a fourth and five on the way for the Bandits. Mungro checks in as the tight end, and Wilson will line up under center on a fourth and five, where Hash goes in the back for two down motion receivers. And it's gonna be play action. And Wilson looks to throw, it's intercepted! Fargo has it at the 15! He's got blockers, and he's missing it as Wilson, and he's gonna take it all the way! No, he's stopped by Wilson at the five! So the good news for the Mustangs is they continue their INT streak. They have at least one interception in their first three games, but the bad news, Fargo was just short of the end zone. Wilson comes up to make the saving tackle. McFarland had it, he took it along the far wall. And Isaiah McFarland has another interception on the season. That's his third. And he has at least one interception in all three games. One interception against the Storm, one interception against the Marshals, and now an interception against the Bandits with the officials talking things over. Perhaps maybe looking to see where the ball will be. Wilson tackled, he got him to the wall at a round. It was between the Bandits 10 and the five. So the Mustangs know they're gonna be in the red zone. With a lot to sort out for the officiating crew. to be silent to hear what the officials saying. And there was some sportsmanlike conduct that was called with the Cedric Walker talking to uh, Bandit's defensive coordinator, Marlon Laban. Uh, Ball is gonna be pushed back. It was originally gonna be near the five, but that is not the case anymore. and it's gonna go back to the 22 yard line. Mustangs will still be on the plus side of the field. They will be working in Bandit's territory. As we are gonna get a media timeout, they, they officially mark it at the 23 yard line with the Mustangs working in Bandit's territory with 107 left in the third. some of t-shirts being uh, tossed to the crowd. One hitting, missing the uh, far side bleachers, and another one misses the uh, far side bleachers with all of the rowdy Mustang fans. It's good to see the Mustang fans, and first home game for myself as well. Really good to see all of the Mustangs fans come out to support the team in the new colors, the new logo, and the new rebranding. With the Mustangs, they will have a terrific opportunity to try to get a two possession game on the clock with 107 left in the third. With an explanation game for the Mustangs. Just because of the record last year, there's been a lot of doubters with this team. But Cedric Walker and his crew, they're looking to say, we are here to compete for CIF championship this year. As we just got a shot that I just missed, it went over my left, it went over my it went over my left hand. I am very upset. I was so close and it went over my left hand as there was a t-shirt that literally came out of nowhere. Very upset. All the sporting events never had a chance to get a t-shirt and I was and I was a foot short. As the media timeout is over, both teams come out onto the field. Ball is at the left hash at the Bandits. 23 with the Mustangs offense, back to work.
The India will line up under center. Jefferson is in the backfield. Two down motion receivers both ways. McAllister with the X receiver to the near wall and almost intercepted. Jason Emery almost came up with Pena looking to get a wide receiver screen to the right side to McAllister. Dejon Emery read it and he almost had a pick. 50 seconds are on the clock as it continues to wind down. Dejon Emery was so close to having his first interception of the season. And the Mustangs just gaining interception number 11 on the year. That's why the Mustangs offense is back onto the field with Isaiah McFarland having an interception. Second and 10 at the band is 23 for the Mustangs. Pena lines up in the empty shotgun. Two down motion receivers go in motion. Pena takes a snap and went up to his helmet. He has room to run, gets past the 20, and he gets down at the 15. With Jeremy Costa coming up to make the tackle for Sioux City. Asi Tapua had some assistance as well. As the ball continues to move up with a third and short coming up from the Bandits 16. With one quarter left to play. This is it my friends, we go to the fourth quarter the Mustangs are up by 10, and they are looking to extend it. They will have the ball at the banded 16-yard line when we come back for the fourth quarter. This is Gillette Mustangs football on 101.5 The Drive. to the Camplex, my friends. One quarter is on the clock. The final 15 minutes are on the scoreboard with the Gillette Mustangs up 22 to 12 over the Sioux City Bandits. Mustangs have a third and three coming up as both teams switch sides. The Mustangs will work right to left on offense and the Bandits are left to right. Ball is at the right hash. A third and three on the way for the Mustangs. Daniel will line up in the shotgun. Jefferson is to his left, two down motion receivers to the far wall. The next receiver to the near wall, it's McAllister. And oh, a snap that goes over the head of Pena. Pena has to run back. He has to dive on it at the 10. It's picked up by Higgins. A bad snap. And the Mustangs, they got the ball back, but they are going to have a fourth and about five miles. The ball goes back. It's a loss. It goes back to the Mustang 16. A loss of 20 yards. Ralph Turner has been the center with Ezekiel Williams coming out of the game for the Mustangs, he was in there. And Ralph Turner is going to take the snap. He will give it to Pena, who's lined up under center, two down motion receivers. And Pena takes a snap, he lifts the throw, and he's going to dump it up to Jefferson. Jefferson has to remember the 20. He's up to the 20, to the 15, to the 10, to the 5. Oh my goodness! JJ Jefferson! Touchdown, Mustangs! A 4 and 20. J.J. Jefferson out of that shutdown that started at the 25 and Jefferson went up to the left side and got it in. The ball was at the Mustangs 14. Wow, wow, wow. Jalen Jefferson with another touchdown on the year. That's his second receiving touchdown on the season. 
and the Mustangs will line up to go for two. Pena lines up under center. Jefferson is in the backfield. And Pena will make the throw. Looking in the lob it in, and it's incomplete. The intended receiver was Michael Cornelius Jr. at the same spot where he flipped over the wall to end the first half. But nonetheless, the conversion is no good. But J.J. Jefferson getting a check down. He went up to the left side and he took it all the way. 12.50 left in the fourth and the Mustangs have a 28-12 lead. Now the defense has to go back to work. 36. A, a, a 36 touchdown pass from Mike Pena even though that was around a 25 yard run for J.J. Jefferson. Very fitting for J.J. Jefferson wearing these colors. He's originally from St. Louis, Missouri, but he is a Steelers fan. Higgins will await to get the opening tee off of the crazy touchdown by J.J. Jefferson off of a fourth and 23. A bad snap, no problem. The Mustangs got it all back and Morris Higgins kicks this away. It goes to Bruno at the five. Bruno looking for a sprint up to the 20, gets near a wall and he cannot get behind a man that's making his Mustangs debut, Eric Mays. Eric Mays, number 23, out of Marshall, Missouri, out of a Central Methodist University and NAIA school in Missouri. Now, talking to him earlier on in the day, introducing myself, finding out that he is a Chiefs fan being from Missouri. Eric Mays with his first tackle as a Mustang. Mustangs have a handful of new players that will be on the field later on in the season, including a new running back, Manuel Caldwell. He is inactive today. Wilson will line up in the shotgun. And he sends a down motion receivers. He takes a snap. He goes to throw. He dumps it off, and it is going to be caught low. And on the way for a touchdown is Drew Prohaska. Drew Prohaska gets the bandits right back in it. One, it took one play, and it was a check down, a low throw. Prohaska had the, he had to get his hands nearly to the ground. He was near the Bandits 20, and he took it all the way. Back to a one possession lead for the Mustangs. And the Bandits will decide to go for three. Wilson lines up with the shotgun for Hashka is to his left. Two down motion receivers go in motion. Wilson takes a snap. He has plenty of time. Dancing in the pocket. Wheels to the right. He fires on the run and it is batted away and incomplete. It remains a one possession lead for the Mustangs with Drew Prohashka getting his second touchdown of the season. It is good to see Prohashka in this game because he suffered an injury at the end of regulation in the Bandits' overtime win against Salina. But he seemed to be in good spirits watching the replay over. He was smiling. He put the thumbs up to the crowd and talking to the coaches uh, earlier on in the day. He said, yeah, he made it back to the uh, postgame party. So it is good to see Drew Prohashka out on the field after the injury that he faced off of the kickoff return to end regulation. And the Mustangs are looking to respond offensively after the defense gives up a big play. Drew Prohashka of a low catch and he ran it up the far wall for a touchdown. However, they fail on the three-point conversion attempt. Mustangs still up by 10 because of it. With 11-10 left in the fourth quarter. This game, my friends, is going to come down to the wire. 
Now as we mentioned with the new rules, the Bandits are only down by one possession even though it's a 10 point lead for Gillette. Gillette working right to left. Mainz will kick it away. Arthur Anderson is back with Quant Higgins. JJ Jefferson is not back. There is a squib kick that is gonna bounce near the goal line for Higgins, who has to pick it up. And Higgins looking to get out of the end zone, and luckily he does. He's tackled at the five with a big blow by Brandon Mites, who comes up after he kicked it to make the tackle. I think Higgins was hoping that the ball was gonna bounce up into the uh, Bandits bench, but instead Higgins had to get it out, and luckily he did. 45 yards, however, for the Mustangs. They start at their own five. Let's see if the Mustangs can respond. Last offensive possession, they had that huge rushing touchdown. To J.J. Jefferson, who is on the field, he wasn't on the field during the kickoff return in his usual spot, Arthur Anderson took his place. They start at their own five. Pena lines up in the shotgun. Jefferson is to his left, two down motion receivers go in motion to the far wall. And Jefferson will get the handoff and he gains nothing. Claude Davis comes up to make the tackle at the right hash. May have lost two yards on the play as well. With the Mustangs looking to get the running game going in the final 10 minutes of this ball game. It is a loss of it is a loss of three, uh, a loss of two. It's on the three. At the right hash, Mike Pena breaks the huddle, second and 12 on the way for the Mustangs, up by 10 with 9.50 left in the game. Pena lines up in the shotgun in the end zone. Jefferson is to his left, two down motion receivers. Pena looks to throw, he gets it off quickly, and it's a catch and a nice run up to the 15. Michael Cornelius Jr. with his first catch since the touchdown to end the first half. As the ball goes up just short of the first down, a nice gain, a gain of nine for Michael Cornelius Jr. And a third and one from the 14. Ball is still at the right hash. Pena will line up in the shotgun, and Jefferson is behind him. Two down motion receivers. Now Jefferson goes up to the line and Jefferson sneaks his way for the first down. Zach Schlugger tried to get him to the other side of the line of scrimmage, but Pena pushed his way through as the ball moves up to the Bandits 14. They move the sticks. And that was a stop that the Bandits needed. Let's see if Reggie Gray will decide to maybe try to play the clock in. Reese Fan checks in as the tight end. Pena lines up with an empty shotgun, two down motion receivers both ways. Pena takes a snap. He looks to throw. A rush and a sack. Pena is sacked by Dejon Emery. And Emery has another sack coming into this game. He was leading the CIF in sacks. Three and a half. That moves the ball back. It's going to be a loss of five. Ball remains at the left hash with a second and 17. The Mustangs have it at their own nine. Clock continues to go down. Eight minutes in counting. And it's only down by one possession if they get the ball back, if they can get the Mustangs offense off the field. Pena lines up in an empty shotgun. Two down motion receivers both ways, X receivers to the far wall. Pena, design run, he looks to take off with it. Gets past the 15 and he gets back to the original line of scrimmage with Zach Schlugger making the tackle right in between the 15 and 20 yard line along the right side of the field from the player's perspective. With Pena getting back up to the original line of scrimmage. Nice gain by Pena. Ball moves up to the Mustang 17. Nice gain of eight yards for Pena, but it will be a third down coming up, third and nine. Mustangs need to get to the Bandits 24 to convert Pena. Lines him in the shotgun. Jefferson is to his left, two down motion receivers. On the far wall, now they go to the near wall. Pena takes a snap. Jefferson's gonna get a handoff with a flag on the field along the left side, and Jefferson does not even get anywhere 
near the first down marker with a flag being thrown up in the air right away. And it's going to be a false start against Gillette. And the Bandits will decline the penalty to bring up fourth down. With a gain of only one for Jefferson off the toss. And he'll bring up a third and nine with the Bandits electing to decline the penalty, looking to get the Mustangs offense off the field. Down by 10 in some good field position. Pena lines up into an empty shotgun. Two down motion receivers go in motion both ways. Pena takes a snap. He looks to throw. He loves it and it's caught by Higgins at the Bandits 20. He's still on his feet and he's on his way. He's gonna score a touchdown. Carlos Higgins, he has the second touchdown of the ball game. Hold on. Oh my goodness. A hold against the Mustangs will bring up another fourth down. With a Marshalls player, I think that was Nizan Emery waving to the crowd. A touchdown taken off the board. And the ball moves back to the Mustangs eight. 10 yard penalty. It's gonna bring up a fourth and 17. See if the Mustangs can work their magic offensively again. But if they don't convert, the Bandits are gonna have good field position down by one possession. Pena will line up in the shotgun. Two down motion receivers and two X receivers both ways. Pena takes a snap, he looks to throw. Bandits bring a rush, he's gonna fire it, it's gonna be cut by McAllister, who has the first down! Ladarian McAllister, he has it! Near the first down marker with the Bandits 24. They move the sticks, first down Gillette! The ball moves to the Bandits 23. 15 yard gain. Ladarian McAllister comes up big for the Mustangs as the offense stays on the field. And the Bandits in the second half, they have struggled on fourth and long. Pena will line up in the shotgun. Jefferson is to his right. Pena, he's gonna hand it off. Nope, it is gonna stay with Pena. A nice trick as they try to get it to McAllister. But Zach Schlager comes up to make the tackle with the Bandits reading that right away. And I think it may be time for the Bandits. They'll start using their timeout soon. They still have all three remaining. They're down by one possession. The ball continues to roll. 4.30 and counting left in the ball game. As Pena goes back up to the line, ball is at the left hash. They lose a few yards, goes back to the Mustangs, 24. Pena lines up under center, and he goes to set up a wide receiver screen. He gets it off to Cornelius Jr., and Cornelius Jr. is pushed to the wall at the far side, near the first down marker, with some extracurricular activities going on. The ball is gonna be moved up to around the Bandit 17. To set up a third and short for Gillette. With the clock continuing to roll down. And they move it back to the Bandit 17. With whistles. With the officials saying something and unfortunately from our vantage point it's a little hard to hear the officials where we're at. As they won uh, 25 seconds on the play clock, that was the confusion. Ball moves to the right hash. Mustangs need to get to the Bandits 13. 
Third and five on the way for the Mustangs. 3.20 left to go. And Gillette's up by 10. Hayden lines up in the shotgun. Jefferson is to his left, two down motion receivers to the near wall. And Jefferson will get the call. We're going to get off his blockers. And he is near the first down marker. He dives his way in. First down, Gillette. Tackled at the 10. And the clock rolls down some more with some extra regulars going on once again in this high intense game. Ezekiel Williams caught up in some extracurricular activities. And the ball moves to the Mustangs nine. A big game for JJ Jefferson. An eight yard gain. Pena will line up in the shotgun. Jefferson is to his right. Two down motion receivers to the near side. Pena takes a snap. He looks to run with it. And a flag is on the field with Pena being tackled at the left hash around the Bandits. Eight. With a hold against the Mustangs on the board. Ball will be moved back some more. And instead, actually, the Bandits decline. Sioux City is electing to take their first time out, and they need to with 2.22 on the clock. If you're the Mustangs, you just want to punch it in and get it up to a two-possession lead. The Bandits wasting some time with their timeouts. They have two remaining now. And for the Bandits, they need a stop. They need to get the ball back. Down by 10, and they need to get a touchdown and then a four point conversion to tie the game. With the Bandits having to use their, their timeout there, that was no question. 222 is on the clock. With a hold on the field against Gillette, so that's going to push the ball back some more. Oh no, actually. We just, my apologies, we just talked about this. Sioux City declining the penalty to keep it as a second and six. From the Bandits, six yard line. Ball is at the left hash. With interesting strategy by defensive coordinator Marlon Lawbent to decline the penalty, trying to save his timeouts, knowing that even if the Mustangs will have a fourth down. They're going to go for it anyway. Ball's at the left hash, and the offense goes back onto the field. Pena will line up in the shotgun. Jefferson is to his right. Two down motion receivers in motion both ways. Pena takes a snap. He faces it to Jefferson. Pena looks to run with it up the left side, and Zach Slugger brings him to the ground with more extracurricular activities near the end zone. Oh, with Justin Gilbert and Arthur Anderson getting into it. And with Cedric Walker coming onto the field in the band, it's usually their second timeout. They will have one remaining. With a stop on second down, it's going to bring up third down. Cedric Walker coming on to the field to have a talk with his offense, a fiery talk at that. The Mustangs looking to put this game away. 2.16 remaining. And if the Bandits stop here, they can use their last time out, knowing that the clock needs their favor if they get the ball back. The Mustangs offense looking to end things right here with a third and goal from the Bandits five. Pena is going to line up in the shotgun. Jefferson is to his left. Two down motion receivers in motion both ways. Pena takes a snap, it's low. He looks to throw. He's in trouble. He's sacked. He is sacked. Davon Bridges comes up to make the huge sack and the Bandits can use their last timeout 
Bandits bring in the Blitz and Reggie Gray is not happy. The Bandits, they hold for now, but the Bandits, they have had their troubles on fourth and longs. It would be a fourth and goal for the Bandits, 15. That's a loss of 10 with Pena trying to trick out the Bandits defense and that did not stop them. 2.10 is on the clock, and if the Bandits stop here, they'll get the ball back down by one possession. And the Mustangs, they need a touchdown. Fourth and goal. But a 10-yard loss on a sack by Davon Bridges. Pena, he lines up in the shotgun. Empty backfield. Two demos receivers both ways, X receivers at the line. At the four row with flags on the field. And the Mustangs may be able to move the ball up a little more. The Mustangs want encroachment against Sioux City. Let's see what the call is. And it is encroachment against Sioux City. Five yard penalty that will move the ball up to the 10. Moves to a original fourth and goal, fourth and 10. At the Bandits 10. Moves the ball five yards. Mustangs can use all the yards that they need. Clock stops at 2.10 with the Bandits out of timeouts. Pena breaks the huddle. In an empty backfield, Jefferson is at the line at the near wall. Far wall receiver and two down motion receivers at the far wall. Pena takes a snap. He looks to throw. Clyde Davis brings him down. Clyde Davis with another sack, the second sack in a row. And the clock will stop with 2.05 remaining. And the Bandits have the ball back. Sioux City bringing on blitzes on this drive, and it works. Cedric Walker comes onto the field in this defense. That has been lights out in their first two games. Needs to come up big here in the Bandits. They need a touchdown and a four point conversion to tie the game. Two minutes remaining. Wilson, he'll line up in the shotgun. In an empty backfield, down motion receivers go both ways. Wilson takes a step, he fires it quickly. It's gonna be caught by Knight. Deontay Jones comes up to make the tackle. It's only gonna be a gain of around two for Sioux City to start off this offensive possession. Move it up to the Bandits 22. The Bandits turn over to the line. Wilson lines up in the shotgun, second and six. He takes a snap, he goes to throw from the 15. Flags everywhere with Wilson firing. It's incomplete, but the play was blown dead anyway. Clock stops with 125 left, and then we'll see what the call is. First start against the Bandits. That's going to move the ball back a few yards. Five yards, and the Bandits will have it at the 17 on the other side of the field. Officials have the signal to get the clock rolling again. Second and 11, Mustangs up by 10. Wilson lines up in an empty backfield. He takes the snap, he looks to throw from the shotgun. He has all kinds of time. He fires a one and it is incomplete. It went out the fingertips of Mainz and that was too close for comfort. Fred Bruno was also there for the Bandits as it will be a third and 11 with the 60 second warning on the clock. Bandits need to get to the Mustangs 23 to convert. The 60 second warning on the clock. As mentioned, the Mustangs will be back in action here at the Camplex against the Billings Outlaws. And the Marshals, they will be back in action. Now the uh, Bandits, they will be back in action as well against the Southwest Kansas Storm. That will be a Friday night game, as a matter of fact, for Sioux City. 
third and 11 coming up with the 60 second warning on the clock. Defensive line coach Brent Taylor coming up as well. You have some insight. Brent Taylor, one of the local coaches here, teacher at Thunder Basin, the official so and Brent to exit the field. Mike Pena went out to the field as well. Coming up after the 60 second warning. Wilson will line up here with the shotgun. One X receiver at the near wall, two down motion receivers to the near wall. But Hosh goes to his right. Wilson sends them. Wilson takes a snap. He looks to throw. Only three rush for the Mustangs. And it is thrown out of the air by McFarland. Pass is incomplete. One play to the side of the game on a 4th and 11 for the Bandits at their own 17. Bandits are all out of timeouts. The Bandits need to convert a 4th and 11. They're at their own 17. They need to get to the Mustangs 23 to convert. And under 60 seconds, the clock does stop if there is a first down. Wilson, he will line up with the shotgun. Prohaska is to his right. Two down motion receivers to the near wall. Prohaska, he takes a snap. He looks to throw. He fires a launch towards the middle of the field. Incomplete! Brandon Mike was the intended receiver, but Deontay Jones was there. And the Mustangs take over! Three incompletions in a row for Taz Wilson. Mustangs offense goes back on the field with 49.9 remaining. Bandits are out of timeouts. And the Mustangs, a few knee downs. They'll be three and out. Mustangs coming up big in the second half. They only had a touchdown in this second half, but it came up big. It was that fourth and long by J.J. Jefferson. Pena will go under center. And it looks like an approachment is going to be on Sioux City. Clyde Davis right to the line. He was saying it was on Gillette. This is going to be bittersweet for the Mustangs, but it is going to be a full start against Gillette. It's 49.9 on the clock. But the Mustangs feeling their first ever win against Sioux City in their history. Pena will line up under center. Jefferson is there, and it'll just be a QB sneak for Pena. He gets up to the Bandits, 19. Clark continues the roll, and there's nothing the Bandits can do. They're out of timeouts. They burned their timeouts when they got that huge defensive stop on the last offensive drive for the Mustangs, but the Mustangs D was able to hold Taz Wilson and company. Mustangs and their fans can feel it. Three and out sounds so good. And they defeat the Sioux City Bandits here today. Ten seconds around the clock. Pena under center. Three seconds. Pena knees it. And the game is over. 28 to 18 is the final. The Mustangs remain undefeated. They go to 3-0 in CIF play, and they get their first win over the Sioux City Bandits in franchise history. Teams are wanting the meet at midfield. And the officials are telling everybody to go back to their benches, apparently. Awesome. 
So never mind, my friends. The game is not over yet. There is one second that needs to be put back on the clock. Well, the officials gave a reasoning, but I, unfortunately, from, from our vantage point, it, it's a little hard to hear the officials. But nonetheless, uh, one second is on the clock because I think the rules are... I've got the rule book right here. I don't think you can take it. So the rule is you can't lose yardage in the final minute of the game. But nonetheless, the Mustangs will need it. And the ball is loose. There's a fumble. The flag is on the field. Zeros are on the clock. But Dejon Emery comes up with the football. The flags are on the field. The officials are still sorting this out. With the knee, the bandits clearly had, they, they, they had the ball. Let's see if we can hear what the officials are saying. Mustangs win it, 28 to 18. They remain undefeated in CIF play. Both teams are coming out to shake hands with each other. The officials given the signal that the game is now over. Needing to put one second back on the clock. The officials are making one more the officials, they called an encroachment against Sioux City. One second is put on the clock, but now that, yes, that is it. The game is over. What a crazy way to end a crazy football game. And what a way for the Mustangs to remain undefeated in CIF play. They go to 3-0 and in CIF play. They're on top. Bandits, they're the two and one. They suffered their first loss of the season. And the Bandits are gonna have a long bus ride back to Iowa. And the Mustangs will go back to their hotel. The victory in their heads as they win it 28 to 18. And they finally beat the Bandits after four tries for the first time in franchise history. Fourth game against this team, and they finally beat them. We'll have a lot to uncover, my friends, when we come back for the Mustangs postgame show here on 101.5 The Drive. We will be back to wrap things up from the Mustangs 28 to 18 win over the Sioux City Bandits. We'll be back on 101.5 The Drive.